Hey hackers, Blue Cosmo from CCS here, and welcome back to the channel today. I'm going to tell you the story about how I got into hacking because a lot of you guys have asked me some of that, and I kind of covered some of it on the Hack5 interview, which I will link in the cards in the description. But yeah, let me actually tell you guys exactly how I got into the cyberspace, cyber world, cybersecurity stuff, you know. So it all started when I was seven years old, right? And um, we had this computer in our study room, I guess, which was kind of like a little library room with a little computer that everyone used. I was about seven, maybe eight, and my brother shows me this website called scratch.mit.edu. Now, I'm sure a lot of you may be familiar with this website, but if you aren't, it is a website where you can create games, but instead of like syntax, we're actually typing out code it has blocks of code and you can kind of drag and drop them and place them in order to make little things move and have some general game mechanics and all that. So I thought, you know, seven year old me, I was like, yo, this is cool. So I made some games that are terrible and they're still up today. And if you ever want me to play some of them, just let me know and uh, we can definitely do that. However, as a very consistent theme, in this video, which is also one of the reasons which led to my nickname Blue Cosmo, is because I always wanted to do something more, right? So I did Scratch, but I was like, this is cool, but I want to learn syntax, um, which is like, again, typing out code. But I didn't even know what syntax was. Like, I didn't even know like the word for syntax. I just saw in the movies people slapping on their keyboards and, you know, getting programs done. So I figured, you know, how do I do that but i didn't know what it was called so i never really knew how to search it up again i was like seven years old so i kind of just lost that interest i mean i still did it for a little bit but I, I i stopped after a while so then middle school rolls up and um there's this technology class where we learn html that's right yeah we learn html so the course starts out as we're making websites right so through html this kind of re-enlightens my like derivative or derive, I don't know what it's called, um, my motivation to go back into coding and stuff that like kind of feeling you get when you're coding, that like enjoyable feeling you get. Um, that's what I was starting to get again, right? So I learned HTML and it's cool while I'm doing it, but at least for me, I'm not interested in making websites. Um, that's just not like web development isn't just one of my personal interests, but I did make a website and it's still up today. And again, if you want me to react to my first website or something, just leave it in a comment because I don't know how interesting of a video that is. But if you want to see, you know, the first website I've ever actually built online, um, we can definitely do that. So with the HTML and CSS, we actually learned that and uh, we learned how to type it. We learned the syntax and uh, we made some pretty cool websites, but it wasn't what I was really interested in, right? I liked the coding aspect, but I didn't like how I was making a web page, right? To me, it felt like I was just making like a glorified Google document or something, which I don't mean that in an offensive way or anything, because I think web dev is still pretty cool. The curriculum comes to a point where we kind of move from web dev to game dev. Now with the game dev, we're kind of using, again, this block code but the one thing is you can turn the block code into syntax. So I tried to use that to learn syntax, but I never really committed to it because the block code was just a little bit easier. You know, after a while, I'd say probably a few months, um, I go on YouTube to watch YouTube and there is this video and I believe it was a video game on Rust only because one of the recommended videos was uh, off of the programming language called Rust. So I clicked on it and I was like, yes, this is what I'm looking for. This is a cool language, but it looks too hard. So what's something like this that I can learn? So I go on to this Discord server that one of my friends are on and one of his college or a few of his college friends are on. And I guess because I'm new and I haven't really experienced the cybersecurity world before, I wanted to kind of, you know, ask away and see like, hey, how do I get into this? Um, this looks really cool. And I wanted to learn a language that is more, I guess, appealing to my interests. And they were like, you know what? This kid, he's new to the world. He's probably super interested in this stuff, super motivated. 
So let's troll him. Let's prank him, right? So the the college people were like, yeah, you should learn DOS, like MS DOS or Batch and Visual Basic, right? Those were like the two languages, like the Batch slash MS DOS and uh, Visual Basic. Those are the languages they told me to learn. And they were playing with me. I'm sure they were just trying to have fun, but um, I learned the languages, right? And um, I guess it, it came to a point where I realized like, this isn't what I wanted to learn. And when I came up to the friend who invited me to the server and I was like, yeah, I don't know that I can't find like the language You're like, oh, they were just like trolling you. Like they were just pranking you, um, which kind of pissed me off. But at the same time, I'm kind of thankful that I learned it because it kind of guided me onto the path where I am now. So I started learning to use Visual Basic and MS-DOS and um, I was like, holy shit, like these languages are really good for like malware development. And I kind of came across that when you start to do a little bit more mischievous things with your code and stuff, started programming some malware. It comes to a point where the AV antivirus isn't um, always detecting a lot of my programs. So as I started learning things like obfuscation, that kind of guided my interest towards the security aspect of the computer science world. After a while, I think this has to be like a year later, I come across Python and I start learning Python. I get certified in Python and HTML. So I started becoming this young hacker, right? That malware kid, right? Who's developing these scripts in school. I wasn't, I was like a hacker, right? Like I was a kid hacker, but I was never experienced or never was exposed to the hacking culture, hacking world, hacking celebrities. I didn't really know people. The only person I knew at the time was John Hammond or who went by Root of the Null and the tutorials I used to learn some of the skill sets I use for malware. Time. So he was like the only person I knew, but even still, I was like, he was just some guy on YouTube, right? Eventually, I come to a point where I start learning more about the security community. The first guy I come across is Darren Kitchen. And as a guy who has a lot of experience with malware development, coming across a guy who's making tools that allow you to automate like the running of files or like PowerShell and like all this other stuff. I'm like, dude, that's cool as shit. Like that is like a guy like me, that's like a dream come true. Like the things like USB rubber duck, your bash bunny. I start getting into the hack five a lot. And then also, um, again to John Hammond a lot. And I actually didn't know he was the same guy as Rudin and Noel for a little bit. I don't know how I exactly found it. I think I clicked on one of his old videos or something. And I was like, oh shit, like this is the same dude, um, which I thought was pretty cool, which is the only reason why I knew he was really the nose to begin with was because of the tutorials I used to learn when I was first getting into the um, malware development world. Along with that, I, I run a YouTube channel uh, where I try to showcase other cybersecurity concepts, whether it's like capture the flag challenges and walkthroughs or programming tutorials or other analysis, just a lot of nerd stuff that, that's kind of fun. That's cool, because yeah, that's how I'm, I'm sure a lot of people know you from your YouTube channel. So can you kind of explain that, like the history of your content? Because I know you used to be Root of the Null. That's correct, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You used, yeah. You used to be Root of the Null, and then you kind of changed into the John Hammond name. <laughs> But again, John Hammond and Darren Kitchen were like the two first YouTube, I guess, icon celebrities who I was introduced to as I was entering the security community. Because beforehand, I was just like a hacker kid, but I never was revealed to like DEF CON. I never knew that was a thing. Or um, Hack5, or John Hammond, Network Chuck, and all these other great YouTube and I'm um, just famous uh, security people, Kevin Mitnick, you know, like I could go on. All right, hackers. So let's check out some of the cool stuff that you guys have been putting in the self promo section of the discord server. If you want to join the discord server, it will be linked in the description as always. So you guys can join that, but let's go ahead and check out some of the cool stuff you guys have been throwing on there. As I start getting exposed to the culture, I'm like, well, this is like really cool. And this is something that I would want to do. Right. But I never really fully committed to it. And um, I kind of just stayed as a, you know, that hacker kid. I didn't realize there was like a community for that. Right. So you're kind of finding like your people. I guess we can fast forward a little bit and it's 2020. First up and foremost, um, the pandemic was a very terrible time for a lot of people. Um, 
you know, a lot of lives were lost and I could never uh, even contemplate like how, like sorry I am for a lot of those families and all like all those types of things. But um, what I realized is at that time, I had a lot of free time, right? I had a lot of opportunities that I wouldn't typically have before. So in front, instead of just sitting there and kind of just wasting that time I, I had, I was like, let me use this time and start putting it into the interests I love. So not only did I start deep diving into more cybersecurity concepts, growing my knowledge, growing my foundation, but it I also kind of saw how like a lot of people were getting scammed through the um, news about COVID-19 and you know all these other basic things i'm like if people just had like a basic knowledge for security practices they wouldn't have to worry about things like this detecting phishing emails not using repeated passwords um just that good security routine that's kind of what drew me in into actually creating cosmodium as a company and again i got that nickname cosmo from the same discord server of the people who actually were trolling me funny enough um because I was reaching for the stars. And um, I can kind of see that as I'm telling the story uh, a little bit more proficiently. Um, I always thought it was kind of cheesy. I didn't choose the nickname, so. I started Cosmodium June 9th of 2020. Um, that was like when I kind of, when the pandemic was kind of at a peak, um, you know, school was out and whatever. And I was like, you know what, it's time to start putting my time into something that I love to do. So I started Cosmodium, right? I whipped out a notebook and got to work, right? And um, now it's a legally registered company. I have employees um, and CTF team now, and we're all you know doing the whole thing. And I think it's honestly one of the coolest things I could have ever wished for. This comes to a point where Cosmodium is on the YouTube channel. We have a website. And we're kind of like, we're, we're starting off. And honestly, Cosmodium is only like just over a year, years old. A year, year, a year, year old, a year, a year old. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, Cosmodium is just over a year old. What year is it? Summer 2021 was kind of the big turning point for Cosmodium, right? Um, first of all, we had the birthday celebration, which I think only 34 people watched that about, right? What what the coolest things is like before the birthday celebration, I emailed John Hammond and I was like, yo, I would love to bring you on the channel, love to interview you. I'm a big time fan and supporter of your channel. Would totally love to interview this guy, right? And like a few days later he responds like yeah totally dude let's let's do this i was like no way we get on the phone and we i got to talk to him i was like first of all like dude you're like one of my biggest inspirations especially when i first got into this um with you know him being root of the knoll and then him being john hammond um those were like the two kind of areas of which he was able to influence part of my life and um honestly john is just such a great dude and he um, was a big inspiration in what I've been doing. So huge shout out to him, right? So I got to interview him and put him on the channel and stuff, which I thought was just the coolest thing ever. All right, so this had to be about a month plus later. I'm watching Houghton catch fire here, actually, at this monitor. And um, an actor I know from the show, I don't know him personally, I just recognized the actor, uh, was in the show. I was like, oh no, wait, this dude's in here. So I go to text my sister, I'm like, yo, this guy that we, um, from this other show is in the show. And I look at my phone and I see DMs from Darren Kitchen on Instagram. And he's like, yo, first of all, it's like four in the morning. So I was like mad tired and I didn't even, I thought I was tripping. It was Darren Kitchen and he said, um, yo, I love what you're doing with the company, promoting LGBTQ, BLM, the whole nine. And I love how you've been using our products because I've been recording a lot with the, um, USB rubber ducky tutorial and I was doing the ethical hacker EDC series. Yeah, it was just crazy. I, I literally screamed and dropped my phone and freaked the heck out. And um, I went to sleep because I didn't even want to DM him back at four in the morning because I didn't want to look weird or anything. Um, I was just like overthinking the hell out of it. But um, 
yeah, we started talking and, um, you know, he gave me his number, we start communicating and then he brings me on to the Hack 5 um, 16 year anniversary interview, which I was talking about earlier. Oh right. no. So I will see if he joins. I've, I've invited um, Blue Cosmo, who I don't know if any of, if, if you guys know, but I've been Blue following Blue Cosmo? Him. Isn't that a drink at the bar? No, I've actually I've talked to you about uh, Blue Cosmo, uh, Shannon, is, the, the YouTuber I was bar? telling you about that's uh, just starting off and is killing it. And uh, I just wanted, like, honestly, I just want him to meet it, you to meet him and him to meet all you guys. Oh, there we go. There's there's Mr. Cosmo himself. Hey, thank you. Hey, yeah. yo, what up? Um, and I got to meet the team, this all stuff. And now we, you know, we're playing stuff together. And I thought this was just like, this is just way cooler. And this took up way better than I could have ever expected. Now I'm, you know, being able to hang out with John and Darren. And it's just, it's a dream come true. If I could go back and tell myself like what I'm doing now. I know, I appreciate you guys. But that's probably going to be it for this video. Um, I just kind of wanted to tell you guys that story and catch y'all up to speed. Um, I'm tired, you can tell I'm tired. Again, it's 2.05. I know the camera is inverted, but it's 2.05. Anyways, I'll see you guys later because I'm tired and I wanna go to sleep. Hopefully I can stop recording videos at like one or two in the morning and actually get back on a more consistent schedule, but it is what it is. All right, but I will see you guys later. So make sure to leave a like, subscribe, leave a little comment because I appreciate you guys. And if you want to join the Discord, make sure you guys join the Discord because we have a cool ass community and I would love for you guys to be a part of it. Anyways, make sure to leave a like, do the whole thing, and I'll see you guys later. So stay happy, stay positive, and as always,